I'm telling you this. I don't have a problem with you giving to another ministry. But your loyalty, where you are fed. I mean, how can you be wicked to your mother who's been feeding you? Huh? Your neighbor does not feed you, does not clothe you. Anything you get, you take it to your neighbor. And the woman that clothes you, you don't give anything to. Am I, am, is someone getting the example I'm, where I'm coming from? Oh, we love Ghanaians. We love moving from one church to another. Thinking the anointed. There's no anointing greater anywhere. Everyone is anointed according to levels and God's timing. Amen? I'm just receiving testimonies that are blowing my mind. They're just blowing my mind. Testimonies upon testimonies. On Friday, I received a testimony. And I'd already called the individual and said, listen, this is what I see and this is exactly. The person came on Friday and said, Pastor Avis. And on Sunday, the same person said, uh, what they said, they've, they've lifted up to, to a better deal. Testimonies. Upon Amen. Testimony. The anointing works here. The anointing Amen. that will work for you is the anointing you value and respect. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody? I said the anointing that will work for you is the anointing you value, you place optimum value on and respect. But you see, if you keep moving from one place to another, not having stability, the Bible said a double-minded person should not believe that they will receive anything of God. A double-minded person. Tell somebody this is your church. Be loyal. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. Amen. So, so we need to come to terms with the fact that yes, your time is needed. It's appreciated. You are also needed. Your money is also needed. Amen. Amen. And there are some of us, we've only become Sunday worshippers. It is not right. I'm, I'm saying these so we can get it out of the way. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not right. You have no excuse to excuse yourself from a gathering. So this preaching, call it why we gather. Call it why we gather. You have no excuse from, from, from excusing yourself from a gathering. Hey, it is in gathering that we are strengthened. You don't have much word in you. And you're not crazy. You don't have, hey, hey, hey. now nah, nah you they lie. You they lie. My friend, you did lie. You don't have enough word in you. It is by gathering with believers that more word, your miracle is at the end or at the height of the kind of word that has saturated you. Saturated you. Some of you can't even read the Bible. Can't even read the Bible. It's a non-starter. It's a non-starter. So it's when we gather like this, Friday, every gathering you are here, that we encourage. We don't understand the power of encouragement. Anytime I see you, I'm encouraged. Anytime you see me, you should be encouraged because you know that you're going to receive a word. I'm going to receive friendship. The spirit of friendship from you that will spare. There's nothing beautiful like finishing service and someone say, Pastor, I was blessed. It is so beautiful. It is immature people who are you know, the preaching. We have to dissect and bisect. It's immaturity. However, whoever brings the word, hey, find your breakthrough in the word. Because at some point, God even used a donkey to speak to a human being. To prophesy to a human being. How much more a person anointed, called of God. However, you see, the, the, you can only say much by learning more. Your depth of revelation is akin to your depth of studies. So if a person lacks revelation, it isn't the fault of God. It is their fault. They are not expending much time. Paul at one point said that some of you study the scriptures because of for polemic, for, for and to, to fight. Some people study the Bible just to argue. That is stupidity. Because the Bible is not about what you know. It's about the revelation. You can know all things and not have the revelation. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. So, if I'm studying the Bible to prove to you that, hey, as I stand here, I can preach and, oh, yeah. If I should actually, John chapter 19, verse 2, right now, some of us would have to look into the Bible. So, it means we haven't finished. <laughs> we haven't finished studying the Bible. Are, are you listening to me? Eh? Eh? Right now, right now. If I should go step by step and give me your favorite scripture in the Bible. 
and quote a verbatim, God will come and meet us here. So it means what? We haven't finished studying the Bible. So you cannot excuse yourself. What? Some breakthroughs happened on Friday. They didn't happen on Sunday. What if your breakthrough was among that? The one that I was so encouraged. Ah, the young man appeared and, and just said, bah, 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 bah. Huh? He said, huh? Then today, today, the same young man came and said, ah, ja, 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 ja. I said, huh? So it can happen. I'll be swimming in money very soon. Amen. And my wife will be chopping my money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, this is not our number. And you know the funny thing about uh, ministry? You can give any excuse why you're not showing up. I can only empathize. The fact that you didn't show up and you've lost your breakthrough, I can only empathize. I can't. Pastors are not magicians. One person, oh, pastor, but you have to do something. Ah, brother, as I stand here, there's a big gap around this finger. I'm hurting. There's an, I'm human, man. I'm human, blood. I, I, there's not much I can do other than teaching the gospel. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. And coming out with your revelation for your next level. Amen? Amen. So when we gather, make sure you gather. Enough of excuses. You are in 2016. Enough of excuses. <sighs> Pastor, you know, I wanted to, but hey, sister, oh, no problem. God is their temple. That's it. That's all I can tell you. It's all right. Let's keep praying. But the fact that you missed your miracle has got nothing to do with what? I, there's nothing I can do if you missed that miracle because you didn't show up. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. It is the year 2016. Somebody ought to change their attitude. Not towards man, but towards God. Because everything you're believing, the fact that you're here tells me that you are believing God for something. Amen. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody? Amen. So if you've gathered and you're believing God for something, then let God know that you really want not something. Hallelujah. Amen. Now for 14 years, one woman went to church. By now you'd have been tired for the same thing. For the same thing. For the same thing. Every going to church, believing, Hannah, what? Going to church, believing that God one way. Ah, first year, nothing happened. Second year, third year. Six is the number of a human number. Once it got to six, you would have, she could have given up, but she went until the 14th year. People listen, you haven't done much. Amen. Amen. You haven't done much. You want everyone to believe that I've been going to church, I've been praying, and nothing has happened. Have you prayed for 14 years? About one thing. One thing. People will just eventually find a better church. Ah. <laughs> Where the anointing is sharper. <laughs> but you see, what you call a better church, it was started by people like you and I who had dogged dedication. Dogged followership. We're prepared to see the kingdom come down. And until we get to that place, redemption house, until we get to that place. Because some of you think we have to stand here and stroke your emotional desires. Yeah, Pastor said this, so I won't come to church. We are not here to make you feel good. We are here to make you feel empowered. You don't like it, that's why no amen. amen. Am I speaking to somebody? Like, we are not here to make you feel good. I, I mean, look at the praise and worship and the worship today. Naturally. The, the feeling, because we are used to movement. But the reality too is that God does not need your dancing to move. He lifted a song and said, when I think of your goodness and I see what you I, I, what was that? I would lift my hands and say, I love, is, is that song not enough for the day? <laughs> Are you listening, somebody? It's enough to stir your love for God. But you see, we are used to natural things. The guy should have been kicking the drum and, you, hey, Yahweh. I've told them, listen, hey, Yahweh, and you stop singing those things and find us new songs. Ah, every year, hey, Yahweh. Well, quite a minute. Every year, hey, Yahweh, and then, and, and, and find new songs. Am I helping somebody? Wave and let me know you are being blessed. I have to get this out of my chest because we are in the new year. People, listen. We're in the new year. 
And we know, you and I know, we are sincere in our dispensation of the word of God to you. We are sincere. We are sincere in delivering the word. I slept at 6 a.m. What was I doing? Praying over everything I've been prepared. And then the Holy Ghost said, push it aside. Is someone getting where I'm coming from? You see, where you want to go is connected to where I want to go. Where I want to go is also connected to where you want to go. So if you disconnect yourself, then watch this. Uh, 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 Mordecai told Esther that if you refuse to help us, if you, Esther, you're in a position, you're in a privileged position right now, Esther. You're right at where they make decisions, quality decisions. But Esther, if you, 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 you become comforted by your, your, your position, understand that God will bypass you and choose another to bring redemption. People, listen to me. If you dare disconnect yourself from where we are going, you might be lost in oblivion, lost in translation. But uh, as, as bad as it might sound, uh, it might be as hard as the situation. If you stay connected, we can always get to the place God has intended for our lives. Amen. Amen. We can always get there. Am I speaking to somebody? We ought to change our approach. We don't need a lot of people to do mighty things for the kingdom. We need a few dedicated people like you and I to do mighty things for the kingdom. 32,000 people were brought before God. Like God thinks like man. Gideon, the Lord said, "Ah, what do you talk, my friend? Send many home. Send them, reduce them. They said, 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 no, send them. And when God found the 300 dedicated ones, he said, I will bring you victory not because of the number but because of my own doing look at how silly how can it be that you're going to war and all you take is a torchlight and a trumpet but you see the breakthroughs of god are not based on the dictates of man am i speaking to somebody now this this testimony i received one day i called the young man i saw him. i said listen and 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 he come i said look towards the middle east that's where your next level breakthrough is I just told him, look towards the Middle East. And he will come and he will confirm it. That's why. And it's exactly in the Middle East that his breakthrough is coming from. Amen. 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 We have to change towards church, our attitude towards church. Sometimes you think driving all the way is... Pl- I've been driving in my car. Now I can know. I feel the car is at its near point i just know i just know i was telling my wife one day the car will just leave us on the motorway and we will leave the car <laughs> and we call a or one of Kwame to come and pick us up leave us on the motorway i can feel it sometimes it's not pleasant but you know what everyone that became great for god one notable thing you could find about them was the spirit of sacrifice and the spirit of sacrifice is the whole essence of love. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of sacrifice. Change your attitude towards God. Hard work would only give you exactly what it can give you. Favor from God can give you a good measure pressed down, shaken together. There's some blessings waiting for you, not because of how hard you work, but because God's favor is moving towards your house, your home, your business, your vision, and your dream. It takes the favor of God. Many years ago when I was in married, I, I dated a couple of people, found out that they were Azonto ladies. Hallelujah. I never prayed for a wife. I just stuck to Matthew chapter 6, 33. Seek ye first. And God gave me a woman after. When I'm even wrong, I still fight my way through. And my wife is a woman of God. So she doesn't fight back. Hallelujah. Your strength will give you exactly according to your strength. If you want a macho man, he will come and macho you. If you want a lomo jata, patience also cut type, you my friend, go for it. But if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, then God will give you what you need, not what you think you need. 
Am I speaking to somebody? And for the rest of your day, listen, you can say, I've just been married. This is the, we're entering the third year. I have never known any headache. I don't hope and I will never know any headache in marriage. Amen. Am, I, am I talking to somebody? Amen. I never, we, we argue for two minutes. It has no go 24 hours. Two minutes. We finish fighting. Pepe, pepe. Bobo will be in the middle. We are done. Two minutes. Two minutes. And when I finish, I make, I'm a very good cook. I make, prepare chicken. and then, My wife will tell you, when it comes to cooking, apart from preaching, cooking. And I will do all kinds of stir fry and all that. And I will season some chicken. And, uh, and one day when she was eating, she said, if, you, if I knew you knew how to cook, I should have prayed to God, for God to bring you to me quicker. <laughs> because of food. Am I speaking to somebody? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Have God get dedication. Why should we? I mean, I mean, with our number, I, I, let, let me be a bit brutal. Do we need to wait many years before we move to buy a place of worship? When if everybody decides to sacrifice their money for this kingdom, we can do that within the next six months. Amen. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. But you see, funny enough, we tend to look at the things of God second. But then on Sunday we show up pretending like God is number one. But we know for some of us God is number six. For some of us God is number seven. For some God is somewhere, somewhere. Am I helping somebody? And, and the writer says that I will build my church and the gates of hell so this church is not being built by any man it is built by christ but then if christ wants to build he chooses human beings to use hallelujah and the bible said in the book of arts when they gathered none had a, a, a need for anything because the, the spirit of love and unity in there was so much so that a person did not need to walk up to somebody to tell them I, I'm, I'm struggling financially here hallelujah hallelujah tell somebody we have to change, have to change. tell somebody we have to change yeah. so let's look at 10 reasons or so why we gather number one Number one, the first major reason. So the scripture we are basing is Matthew chapter 16 verse 8. And I will build my church. Hallelujah. But in building the church, we also gather as believers. Amen. Number one, when we gather as believers, number one, we are strengthened. Tell somebody we are strengthened. When we gather as believers, we are strengthened. Now let me break that strength out down for you. Strengthen not as in physicality, but number one, strengthen spiritually. So, so the major reason, one reason why we gather as believers is that number one, we are what? Strengthened. But under being strengthened, you find out that we are strengthened spiritually. So someone, an older person will call you and tell you that. I've, I've just watched you, have seen a couple of things. You need to change and study the scripture. The individual is strengthening you what? Spiritually. Amen? Amen. So when we gather as a church, as Redemption House Family Church, number one, we are strengthened. But under being strengthened, you are strength, strengthened spiritually. Tell somebody, I'm strengthened spiritually. Strengthened spiritually. Now, one of the things I also want you to understand is that don't come and sit here without a pen and a paper. I'm not interested in that. We are too mature for those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, now, by, by, by reason of technology, some of you, you write these things down and make inference and reference so that one day you, you would hit a crunch that you can quickly. You are strengthened spiritually. Number two, under being strengthened, you have number one, spiritual strength. Number two, intellectual strengthening. Intellectual strengthening. Intellectual strengthening. One person will call you, describing your situation and tell, can you read this book? 
Or can you make reference from this website? Or can you listen to this CD? Now, by virtue of YouTube, there isn't anything anyone here should be struggling with. If you know, the reason why you might be struggling is because you've not been strengthened intellectually. So we are strengthened spiritually and we are strengthened intellectually. Hallelujah. Number three, under being strengthened, under being strengthened, we are given access doors. The person may be, you're a single lady. Now recently, uh, one, one woman called me and said one of his brothers wants to marry and is believing that of her wife. I said, oh, I know some sisters in my church that are not yet married. Now imagine if the young man walks in and comes to me and I point him to a couple of sisters and he chooses. <laughs> Do you know what happened? I've opened the door for somebody's marital blessing. That's what happens in church. Man. One of us was believing God for a job for many, many years. So we are strengthened. We open doors. Number four, doors. Job doors are open for you in church. We're not only here for the spiritual. How many of us live in the spirit for 24 hours? Job doors. One person was believing God for a door and all that. A job door. I'm not knowing the person to bless them was closer. To held a hand. Listen, prior information. Advantage by advanced knowledge. Before she went for the interview, the, she, she already knew she was going to get it. Tell somebody that's favor. That's not prejudice. Am I speaking to somebody? That's not prejudice. Before, so I called her and said, listen, you've already gotten a job. But weren't impressed at the interview. But for many years, she had been believing God for a job. Am I speaking to somebody? Hello? Hi. We are corrected by our lifestyles. We are corrected. We are rebuked. We are reproved. Everything to do with the 360 degree you. It happens in church. Somebody, a, a, to, a calamity that would have happened. Uh, there are people I call as a, 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 B, C, D. Be careful. I've saved the individual. Am I speaking to somebody? And what you don't know is that as a pastor, I have access to privileged information. Most of you don't know. And so every now people are calling me. Pastor. I say yes. A, B, C, D. I say okay. It is well. I'll handle it. Imagine if I had not come to me. Am I speaking to somebody? Is someone listening to me? Imagine if somebody had not called and said A, B, C, D. Or sometimes I'm home praying and God reveals clearly. So I call the person and said, this is the revelation. And God is not lying. <laughs> and I tell them God is not lying I said pastor it's true God is not lying this is exactly what I said. I said this is how you have to go about it it happens in church if I didn't know the individual what has that got to do with me what should have happened to them would have happened to them am I speaking to somebody Amen. Well, it happens in church sometimes we are all in need one person shows up and said oh i have more than enough here's some money to help you until such a time it happens in church i would never i always tell my wife that one day when i'm blessed if god is ready to call me home i will leave an inheritance for the church i'll leave it for the church this land was not bought by the church of england it, somebody a captain whatever when you go outside there somebody gave them this land One person built a certain part of the church. Another person also built a certain part. You are sitting here enjoying, isn't it? It happens in church. Am I helping somebody? We are corrected. We are a family. Family. So when somebody calls you and says, No, you don't talk like that. Don't just say, Hey, are you the one to call? Brother, we will leave you. And you will see where that lifestyle will lead you to. So we are strengthened spiritually. Hallelujah. And being strengthened, you have been strengthened intellectually, knowledge-wise, being strengthened spiritually. Doors are open for you. We are corrected. But you see, in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, Paul says, let it not be like them who, do, who don't like gathering. And I will show you what happens to people who always refuse. Believe it. You are easily a prey for the enemy. You are easily a prey. You are easily a prey. The devil is interested. Uh, when they gathered in the upper room, the last, after they eat him, the last conversation Jesus had with the believers, one person was missing, Judas. And the enemy got him. Hello? And the enemy got him. At some point, Paul said, Alexander and Dimas have left me. L having, loving the cares of this world. They had left him. And so the cares of this world had gotten him. Please don't forget 
You're not here because of the houses you want to buy in the car. You are being prepared for heaven. You are being prepared for the soon coming King Jesus. You are being prepared that one day when Christ comes, he will look at you and say, Thou good and faithful servant. You are being prepared. It's not about the dress you wear and all that. No, those things. No, no, no. It's not about any of them. You are being prepared. You are being prepared for the kingdom that is yet to be up here. That's yet to appear. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. So being strengthened. Number two. So under being strengthened, you have uh, I, 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 O, I, 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 I. Then number two. We are being empowered. Empowered. You see, the raw form of God's power is his word. Is his word. Oh. At least, if I should ask everyone, you might not be able to quote the exact scripture. But there's a scripture you know within you. You know it. You know it. You know it offhand. You know it with ease. We've been empowered with the word of God. Empowered with the word of God. Empowered. That you, can, you can know that I have a right in the scriptures. So if I have a right in the scriptures. Then devil you cannot. Because the scripture says this. But what if you are. There's nothing in there. Empty head. Empty pocket. What is in there determines what you have in here. It won't change. What is in there determines what you have in here. I was reading a thing about this man who earns 2,000 pounds every minute. What is in there? If it's about money, determines what? 2,000 pounds every minute. Every minute. Every minute, 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds every minute. Every minute. Every minute. Every minute. Why? Because of what is in there. Am I speaking to somebody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you are being empowered with the word. And the greatest inheritance you can receive is that of the word of God. It supersedes any other thing. I mean, I, we grew up in London. I came to London when I was 24. Stars upon stars. Where are they? When Zoe was in her ten or uh, her, the, her great her favorite artist was Jaru and Ashanti. That was the era when they what's now got to do. And Zoe would forget that she's a preacher's daughter, man. And twenty four seven and Jaru, Jaru, Jaru. Soon she dropped Jaru. And uh, you, uh, you remember Britney Spears, the era. And it kept on and it kept on and it kept on. And you find out that it's empty. It's empty. It's empty. <laughs> Hello? Now, Ghana, there's a uh, Bisakede Mansa. And uh, Mansa, hey, hey, hey. and soon Mansa will give away for a course. <laughs> and, and we. <laughs> Can I, there's nothing that will satisfy you more than the word of God. A believer who does not study the word is a believer who is preparing themselves for disaster. A believer who lacks the word is a believer who is struggling in life. I keep saying that if you, the whole week you've not even prayed for one hour. There's something wrong with your Christian work. Uh, prayer. That, uh, how much more studying the word for an hour. There's something wrong with where you want to go with your life uh, hallelujah Amen. hallelujah Amen. it is said that most CEOs wake up two hours before the world that's the world things over before you wake up they have already gotten ready by six o'clock they're in their offices how are you going to beat such a one now bring it into Christ Imagine you take the word. See, I, I, I love the newly married, especially her. She's, like, she's a mommy's daughter. Oh, pastor, you see. And, and uh, you're in trouble, my friend. <laughs> and, but you know, what will build this family? It's not how much you earn. Because you can earn as much as and lose it all. Are, are you listening? What will build this family is how much word the two of you take time. You are the high priest of your home. The two of you sit down to study the word. Then your children will grow up in the word. Am I speaking to somebody? <laughs> it's not how smart and, and the psychology said. What is psychology? Where there's neither wrong nor right. Hello? 
your next level is dependent on the revelation you catch out of the word you can work and work hard and work hard and the hardest you can work all your life hours and still end up with zilch but you see just a minute revelation can catapult you from zero to being a hero and revelation is readily available and jesus when he was teaching the disciples how to pray he said and when you stand to pray after you've hallowed the name of the lord and describe the kingdom he said and when he said give us this day a daily revelation bread is also food daily revelation so you see revelation is not yearly i mean i have my testimony and i stood here and said we declare this year as a year of grace for uncommon favor my wife went and bought a laptop didn't know she didn't like it can you imagine women ah. she didn't know she didn't like it and unfortunately when you with electronics once you break the seal of the box they don't take it back she had not done anything on it the guy said they wouldn't take it back she went in shop i said leave it the next day i will go and change it for you now naturally afro-caribbeans are known to be very aggressive in dealing with other people other races so you the natural thing was to go in there and quote the uncotable my wife read their policies. I said, you are wasting your time. You went in there, they refused you. Policy will not give you what you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I just said, this is my year of grace for uncommon favor. And I'm uncommonly favored. That's all I said. The next morning, I went with my sidekick, Mrs. Bobo. Went in his job, saw the manager. I said, oh, we bought this. Oh, we don't do that. He walked away. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bother. I was hanging in there. I said, oh, we have to, we have to talk. I said, okay, I'm with a client. And the, 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 the guy came, I said, oh, what happened is that we've not even touched anything. The mistake we made was to break the seal. But this is the laptop she wants and I'm prepared to pay more for it. He looked at me, I said, you give me time. He went about, he came back and said, okay, I will do it. But they don't do it. But grace for uncommon favor, that is upon me. Amen. that says that I'm uncommonly favored Amen. touched him he didn't know how he signed on the receipt and said take it to the front deck and tell them this is the one you want I said that's the one I want. he said that's the code I said that's the code he said go tell them that I the manager says they should do it for you listen revelation tell somebody revelation, revelation. not aggression tell somebody not aggression not hard work tell somebody not hard work it's what will open that door you are looking for easily you think you have to date everyone before you get married? By the time you finish dating, your body would have been wasted. There are vultures out there. Vultures out there looking for an opportunity to sample you up. You think you have to tell before you marry? No. You need favor. Tell somebody you need divine favor. There are many young men and women out there who God, whom God is preparing. And if you would wait, he is going to give you his heart desire for you. And for the rest of your days, if you don't wait, you'll meet Alumu Jata. She wakes up in the morning. Instead of blessing you, she'll drink alcohol, brandy, bah, 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 put the bottle down, pine, <laughs> and the war starts. <laughs> you get out of your house without even knowing that you're not wearing one shoe. And you're wondering, you're one, one, you're, <laughs> one leg will be in a puddle, and you're wondering, oh, so I'm just wearing one shoe. Yes, you will know, Obana. If you don't wait on God, am I speaking to somebody? Favor. So you are empowered through the word. The word of God is everything God is to man. The word of God is everything God is to man. The word of God is everything God is to man. And until we realize it, you think you have to do that. It's all right to do what you're doing. But after you've done that, bring it before the altar. And let God himself tell you. This will happen at this time. There are some things I know when they will happen. And there are some individuals here. I know when certain things will happen for you. In spite of how you're rushing it, I know when. So patience. Then you keep studying, preparing, studying. You don't have to do anything for your breakthrough to walk in. Because there are some breakthroughs that come from God that if you measure your ability and your intellectual ability, you will know you don't deserve it. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. There are some positions God is preparing you for. I mean, imagine a boy sent to the war front, go and deliver food to your brothers, comes to meet a giant, 
he stirred up spiritually. His inheritance was revealed that if you get rid of this guy, what God has for you is at the other side of this giant. Stirred by God. Picked up stones. Looked at the giant and said, I'm knocking you down because you are blocking me from my inheritance. It takes revelation from the word of God. I commend the word of God to somebody here in the name of Jesus. I commend the word of God for you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the word lies your healing. In the word lies your breakthrough. In the word lies your promotion. Everything you're believing God for. Your anointing, your open doors, your favor is in the word. Shout the word. It's in the word. You're empowered. Number one, you're strengthened. Number two, you're empowered. When we gather and you don't, you're losing out. You're you are preparing yourself as a prey for the enemy. Your attitude has to change. We don't serve only, or neither do we worship. As a church, we don't only worship God on Sundays. We also meet on Fridays. So when we decided that we will meet on Friday, God gets ready because he's written it down. Some breakthroughs are happening on Friday. They're not happening on Sunday. Why? Because he has prepared Friday as a day of our service. Am I speaking to somebody? Hello? Now, because we don't own this place, we can't even have a proper Friday service. This year, I want us to have all nights. The place, we want to say Mary. They said, no, they won't give it to us. Where I also targeted. They said, it's fully booked for the whole year. We have to look for a place for night vigils all night. We have to. Hello? We have to. So we can meet every Friday, pray from 11 through to 4.30. For the supernatural. Imagine every month you have done long hour of prayer. I mean, heaven would have no choice but to break open for you. Amen. You're strengthened spiritually. You're empowered. Hallelujah. Amen. You're empowered. You're empowered. Hallelujah. You're empowered. You're empowered. The third thing you need to know is that when we gather, your destiny is revealed to you. Your destiny. Most of you will enter into new realms of opportunities and higher levels of breakthrough, higher levels of opportunities that ordinarily from the outside world you would never have known. And you would do simple things for those doors to be open. It happens in the house of God. It happens in the house of God. It happens in the house of God. It happens. In the house of God. Your destiny is revealed to you in the house of God. It is about your destiny. This warfare is not about you per se. It is about what you carry. And until you understand that you carry so much, that is why the enemy is after you. You will take your life for granted. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that God reveals your destiny to you. The essence of your destiny to you. Your next level plan of God for your life. I pray that God reveals it in the mighty name of Jesus. Who said you would, you would die? Die. You don't understand the purpose of your destiny. That's why the enemy comes to you and scares you and makes you believe that you will die before your time. No. Who said you can't get what you are believing God for? It's because you don't understand your destiny and what it entails. That your destiny is also a capture of the essence. Every point by point plans of God for your life. Every point by point point you get to this level god says this is the level you've got into let's sit down and assess how faithful you've been you've been and what you qualify for for that level so you see every level god tells you what others are saying maybe you are walking past an office that one day you will buy and maybe you're working even in that office at the lower level that one day you buy without even knowing. I, I don't know. I read a story in America about a janitor that eventually rose up to possess own the school that he used to work in. A janitor, a cleaner. They eventually had no choice. He wasn't just cleaning, he was learning as he cleaned. He was understanding governance and policy. And they came a time and a season, they had no choice. He was the most qualified person. Your destiny is revealed to you. The purposes of your destiny. You see, can I be honest with you? God does not change destinies. God changes locations. 
in our language you say god will change your destiny in krabia no 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 baby uh, 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 um, ushebre shebre and in krabia are entirely shebre pet mother is uh, has to do with location in krabia has to do with your destiny the destiny of god for you is that you are to be a man and so if god is to change you what is he changing you into your location, rather, is what God changes. He shifts a man out of the miry clay. Shifts a man out of the... It's not about education or who you know. When God gets ready to shift, the Bible said he lifts a man, lifts him out of the miry clay. And guess what? When God lifts you up, he does not lift you with the dirt. He cleans you. He said he lifts a man and places him even amongst the princes of his own people. The princes of his own people. Ah. Somebody's breakthrough is just around the corner. Somebody's breakthrough is just around the corner. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your destiny is revealed to you. That's number three. Number four. Your enemies are revealed to you in church. Your enemies. Now, immediately I talked about enemy. You cast your mind at an outsider first. No. There's an enemy in you. He doesn't want you to be free. Amen. I was talking to somebody and I asked him what is sin. Started drunkenness. I said, no, that is not sin. That is not sin. Sexual perversion. I said, no. The Bible never said that is sin. Read your Bible. The Bible said, these are the manifestations of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. But they are manifesting simply because the door of sin is there. And I said, what is sin? Sin is a person refusing to accept Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. And even when you've refused and you're living opposite, it's anti-acceptance. Am I speaking to somebody? Manifestations of the flesh. He said they are evident. They are, they are evident simply because you are claiming you've given your life to Jesus, but it's not true. You just have to say that. Manifestations of the flesh. He said, ah. If the flesh can manifest that, then, then the writer and the same Galatians 5.22 also says that by the fruit of the spirit. So you see, in order to stop the flesh from manifesting its desires, more of the Holy Spirit, more of the word, more of Jesus. And as you feed on his word, gradually you are empowered to deal with the manifestation. So the one that used to drink, Paul says, will refuse. Do not drink anymore. The one that used to misbehave, as more word comes in, you take charge over this flesh. The fallen nature, the emotional desires that often plagues us and leads us into places that we, we, we often question. Where is Jesus? Am I speaking to somebody? Your enemies are revealed. What enemies are fighting you? The outside enemy. It's only fighting you because of the inside enemy. Wave and let me know you are being blessed. Weakness is weakness. Watch this. Mistakes are mistakes. Weakness are mis weakness. Sin is sin. Now how do that? Now a continual repetition of the same mistake becomes a weakness. That is why the writer says, the righteous can fall seven times. If he dares not get up on the seventh time, it will become a weakness. Now, how do we get enticed to sin? Through your weakness. Is someone getting where I'm coming from? You see, the saying you keep repeating. The same mistake, 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 mistake. Eventually, that mistake ossifies and it becomes a weakness. So when the enemy wants to attack you, he attacks every one of us here is attacked and probably enticed to sin through what you're weak at. Do you eat chapati? You don't. So the devil cannot come and test you with chapati. It's simple. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? How about? You don't need to eat chapati. Why will Satan come and test you with chapati? He hasn't got time. But you see, sometimes we say some things to ourselves and he hears you. And he comes to you with what you've been silently telling yourself. If I look at that woman uh, by now, if my hands were all over, 
So you told yourself, there was no one around. So the enemy says, his hands want to be on that woman. Make, make allowance for that. And when you are tempted and you fall, you are wondering, how did I fall? You're asking me. <laughs> but you told yourself that you wish your hands were all, all over that woman. And when you said it silently, understand, he's always been our silent partner. When you told yourself, if I get that woman the way I'll slap her, the devil will come and make allowance for the slapping. No knowing that the slapping will lead you to court. And in court, they will charge you your extra money and give you community hours that will affect your reputation and your record. How am I speaking to somebody? So you see, continual rep repetition. Then God even comes in and says, kill off that mistake. So then it becomes a weakness. Hallelujah. And when it becomes a weakness, the enemy is always seeking an occasion to use your weakness against you. And so guess what? In your weakness, nobody is tempted beyond what you're weak at. The devil knows what you're weak at. God also knows where you are stronger. So guess what? When the Holy Spirit is released for strength, he comes to empower your strength so that you'll be more strengthened. You see, I, I stop bothering myself with what I call my weakness because I realize the key to overcoming any weakness is to be more strengthened. Hello? Hello? To be more strengthened. So more fasting, more praying, more studying of the word, more carefulness. More careful. You're looking at that thing and you know that thing is looking at you. And that thing wants you. God told Cain that sin is at your door. And it's desire. Genesis chapter 4. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4. And um, I said, sin is at your door. Not that sin has already overtaken you or entered your house. It is at your door. And it's desire. It's not for me. It's for you. Ah, brother. Hello? Hi. Let's try Genesis chapter 4 verse 8. If, am I helping somebody? Yes. Even your enemies in the church. Enemies that will affect you are revealed. And once they are revealed, where's that? And Yeah, 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 yeah. No, let's go to 7. Try 7. Verse 6, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou did, did well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou did not well, sin lieth at your... No, if you don't do well, the same mistake. Every year, God have mercy on me on this mistake. Every year, every year, you are fasting on that mistake. You are praying on that mistake. You are giving... He said, he said, if you do well, sin cannot be. But because you've not done well, guess what? Sin is at... Where? Lies at where sin has come to make a bed at your door, waiting for an occasion, waiting for an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And it says that, and unto thee shall be his. So sin is a person. It didn't use its desire. Sin is a person. Unto thee shall be his. The desire of sin, the particular sin that is lying at your door, not my door. Has its desire for you, for you, for you. It wants to possess you. But it started as a mistake. And you, you cared little about that. And then, uh, oh, but I'm only human. Then it became a weakness. Now, how can it be? Eat that which is of my house, and my house is blessed. How can sin be lying in the house that is blessed? Somebody made the mistake and took it for granted. Took that mistake for granted. And unknowingly and unconsciously, sin now crept quietly and is lying at your door. So you see, nobody can say, I didn't know how I fell. The falling began many years before you even fell. Sin was there waiting for that occasion. So in church, your enemies are revealed to you. The enemies that are fighting you internally. And those, it is because of the internal tension that outside tension now has an effect on your life. How am I speaking to somebody? So if you can fix what is inside, it is easy to fix what is outside. 
we gather because as children of God, I care about you, you should care about me. I pray for you, you should pray for me. And, and together in the spirit of unity, we move mountains and make a name for God, not for anyone. Kindly stand. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands quickly. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for our lives, for this word. Move us from glory to glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now, give me as many envelopes. Now, you remember 